Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to My Expanded Universe, a show where I go through the entire EU in chronological order as best, and the whole crowd says, I know how! Sorry, it's kind of make-believe land up here sometimes. <laughs> Alright folks, it's time to get back and let's dig into these Clone Wars. Uh, we're going to go to Star Wars Insider, issue number 79. It was written by Mike Bartz called Death in the Catacombs. And this is about Jedi Jill Sente as she's cleaning up after the Battle of uh, Geonosis and a Geonosian scientist, Dr. Frain, I think was his name, uh, is trying to make away with some uh, technology to sell on the black market. Can she capture the bad doctor? Ah, oh, you know, it's a short story. Uh, this one's okay. Uh, this is, you know, nothing too memorable about this. Uh, the Star Wars Insiders, a lot of people ask me this, Matt, how can I get these? These are, they're way too much online to get individually. So is it worth it to get these? Unless you're really interested. Like if you like the Clone Wars era, era then yes, you will want this. Is it one of the best? No. Star Wars Insider was kind of hit or miss. Um, this one was fine. There wasn't anything bad about it. But one that's better is the next one we're going to talk about and Star Wars Insider number 66. Now this one was called Illusion Illusion and it was by someone we all know, Michael Stackpole. Now in this one, it's an Aya Secura story as uh, she and another Jedi are going to track down a techno-union technician who has... Uh, Valuable information on some technology, separatist technology. Ooh, uh, this is Stackpole. This is actually pretty good. And the reason I like this one uh, more than the one prior is because Stackpole uh, ties in some uh, storylines from other books he's written. In fact, uh, this ties into a backstory of Corn Horns from the X-Wing series. So folks who like Stackpole's X-Wing books, if they read this short story, they'd be like, oh wow, there it is. You know, it's, it's just basically a mention. It's not anything big. But it's nice that they can they connect things like that. Now Stackpole knows his books inside and out. So I don't know whether he suggested he write a Clone Wars, you know, short story featuring, you know, a, a tie-in to his X-Wing books. Or if they said, hey, write a Clone Wars story, because Clone Wars is hot right now. And he decided to write this and tie it, you know, tie some of the back history into his X-Wing books. Uh, either way, though, it, authors who usually wrote novels and short stories did this quite often. And of course, Stackpole makes no exception to tie it together. And I, I think that's why, that's for me, that's what separates, not always, but a lot of times that's what separates a better story than an okay story, is if they share some kind of other connections within the EU. Uh, later on, the Star Wars Insider. I think I'll talk about this one, ooh, right toward the end of the Clone Wars. There's a short story in The Insider that takes place, and it's just, it's, it's horrible because it has no connection to anything else within the EU. It's just their, their own little story. I don't know what they're trying to create, and uh, I'm already talking too much about it. I'll save it for later. The next book on the list you should read is Boa Fett Crossfire by Terry Bisson. Now, this is book two in the series, and this one, Boa Fett and Ara Singh continue their adventure to look for Jango's fortune. Now, in this is something called the Dark Reaper, which is a reference to the 2002 Clone Wars video game. Uh, I, I did not know that. I found that out in uh, Pablo's Guide to the Expanded uh, Universe books. Uh, I, I've never played the game before, so I didn't, I didn't notice that connection when I read it. Um, to be honest, these Boa Fett books uh, caught me completely by surprise when they came out. I think I didn't even find out about them until book two came out. I was uh, at my local bookstore looking for something else, and I saw Boa Fett books, one and two. I was like, wait, what? And so I picked them both up. So it's kind of a surprise to me that these happen. Uh, the second book is, is slightly better than the fir first. Um, Terry Bisson does an okay job. Uh, it, the story just wasn't pulling me in. The characters weren't pulling me in like uh, something like a Jude Watson Jedi Apprentice book had. And so not to say he's a bad author, because honestly I haven't read anything else from uh, this person to, to verify whether or not they're good or bad. But the uh, first two Boa Fett books that he wrote, which were the only two, they got a new author after that, um, his weren't as good. Even though, like I said, this one's a little bit better because they kind of 
they veer away. The first one's half of it's a rehash of Attack of the Clones, which I told you last week. But uh, this whole book is all new stuff, which I did enjoy that. So it was, you know, slightly better than two. In fact, those books kind of may have ramped up for me. But uh, Terry Bisson, as an author, didn't really, I don't know, have a feel for what uh, those books should have been and what they eventually turn into. All right, folks, that's all for today. I'll see you next week with another video. There we go. Hi. Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to <laughs> All right, hold on. Hi folks, I'm Matt and <laughs> uh...